Section 11.1, example two. So we'll do another um, differences test. Again, we'll have two samples, um, two averages, and that's why we're using differences, right? So differences, just a reminder, right? We have two samples or two averages and they're paired. So a single average is the old test, right? This is two averages, it's different two samples. So a large timeshare company in Hawaii noticed that they seem to be selling fewer units in the, than in the past. So at the end of a slow summer month, they decided to test out a new incentive plan. They offered bonuses to any of the sales associates who produced um, an increase in sales the following month. Um, what else? After the end of the first incentive month, they randomly selected records for 31 of their sales associates. So that sounds like our sample size. And compared the number of units sold in the month prior. So that sounds like my first one. So I'm gonna write that down somewhere. So mu one equals prior or before. That means before. To the number of units sold during the first month of the plan or after the plan. So that'll be mu two is after. So I find it really helpful to write this down. It helps me keep track of what's going on. And the paired sample produced the following statistics. So N is 31, D bar was negative 0.226, and the standard deviation was 1.8203. So we get to skip one bar stats because we've already done this. Um, to me, this is a small difference. Notice it's pretty close to zero. So it might just be random. I think in our last example, we were like negative one, what were we? Pretty far, right? Negative 1.17, so that's a little bit farther from zero. Negative 0.226 is pretty close to zero, so maybe it's just random and the plan's not working. Um, but that's what the hypothesis test is for. So does the data provide enough evidence at 5% to show that the average number of units sold for all these units was higher the month after. So I'm gonna highlight that. That's gonna be my hypothesis in a second uh, than the month before. So let's see if we can write a hypothesis for this. So step one, HO means there's no difference. So mu one equals mu two, right? No difference means the plan isn't really doing anything. The average just stays the same. And now we wanna show um, that it's bigger after. So mu1 is before, and we want before to be less than after, right? Because that means after would be higher. So this will be actually a less than. So wording is a little tricky on these. So again, I like to write them out in words before I worry about the symbol. So before should be less than after because that'll make after higher. All right, and so step two, alpha is just O5. And let's perform a hypothesis test. So we'll use the formulas for differences. So we're, gonna, we're on differences, so T is D bar over S over square root N. So we get negative 0.226 divided by 1.8203 all over square root 31. I'm just adding parentheses as a reminder. So again, you can do it in two steps, do just the top, just the bottom, and then divide. Or if you do everything at once, just throw parentheses on that denominator. You could throw parentheses on both if you're not sure. Um, the reason I didn't put them on top is it's a single number, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're not sure, you can just always do it. If you're getting different numbers than me, then maybe you're better off doing just the top, just the bottom because you're making a typo. And we get a t-score of negative 0.691, which again is leaning towards my idea, idea of not rejecting because it was just a small difference. And that's why we're getting a t-score that's more towards the middle. All right, but let's do that p-value. Um, we're gonna mark negative 0.691. Right, remember zero is in the middle. Um, we're doing a less than, so we'll shade to the left for less than. Right, remember, we get the tail from the hypothesis. And then since it's T, we need degrees of freedom, 31 minus 1 or 30. 
So our p-value will be tcdf, because we use the t-curve. Um, lower is 10 to the 99, negative 10 to the 99, because we went to the left. My upper is negative 0.691, and degrees of freedom 30. So go ahead and type that on your calculator. Should be getting pretty comfortable with these menus. We've been doing it for a while. So negative 10 to the 9, again, because we're on the left, negative 0.691, and then 30. And we get a p-value of 0.2474. So like 24, 25% chance this could happen randomly if there were no difference. So that's way too high of a chance. That's way too risky. So since we're way above our 05, too risky, it could easily happen randomly. So we do not reject. We're not rejecting that the means are equal. It doesn't mean they are equal. It just means they still could be equal. So the data does not provide enough evidence at 5% to show that the true average, remember we were looking at average number of units sold for all of the sales associates was higher. I'm really just copying the question, right? Was higher the month after the incentive plan was enacted than it was the month before the plan. It just means our difference wasn't big enough to prove there is a difference. We had a small difference, but it could have just been random. So that statistics is weird, right? There is a difference, it's slightly smaller, but it's not big enough to prove it's not random. So our difference wasn't big enough to prove there is a difference, it could just be random. And it may not be random. Remember, we're just proving the more likely thing. And then were our requirements met? Uh, since we're again in mean land, we're gonna look at sample size. So it's not NP or NQ, there's no proportions. Um, there's no chi-squares here, right? We're in mean land. So that goes back to the 30 rule. So since N is 31, 30 is big enough. So D bar is approximately normal and the requirements have been met. Regardless of the distribution of sales differences in the population. So we don't care if they're normal in real life because our sample size is big enough. And then, and the data was paired, right? Because we were looking at the same person. And so that's our paired test. So the paired test means we have two samples, two populations, um, data's paired. If it's not paired, it's a different test, which we'll have to come back to later. Um, but th this is different than section 9.3 because again, there's two samples, two averages, all that. So 9.3, right, again, we'll still only have one sample. It's a very similar test. And that's it.